Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Jarrettstown Presbyterian Church, and we are celebrating 230 plus years today. Yay, praise God that we are still here. There are a few announcements. I want to welcome everybody that is on Facebook Live and let, let you all know that we are not alone. <laughs> there are folks joining us over Facebook Live and possibly Zoom. So in three different ways, we are worshiping together the living God. Let us pray. Sovereign God in Christ, you have done the impossible raising our Lord Jesus Christ from death to life and offering us new life in him. We pray for your Holy Spirit who inspired these scriptures to move in and inspires us as we hear your word to us today. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from both the Old Testament and New Testament. I'll be reading Exodus chapter 3 verses 5 to 6 and then John chapter 11 verse 21 to 26. Then he said, Come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our third scripture today comes from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 17 through 28. Hear God's word. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ but each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he's destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all the enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has, not, has, for God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that this does not include the one who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who put all things in subjection under him, so that God may be all in all. May God add his blessing to the hearing, the reading, and the preaching of God's holy word. So I'll ask you, like I ask the kids, and I'll ask a little differently. Have you ever played the what if game? Sometimes we play it backwards in our lives. We go, what if, and we look back in life. What if this happened or that happened? What if that? Or sometimes we play it forwards. What if, and we think about the possibilities that lay ahead. Peter Simons is a consultant and a coach. And he offers this insight. What if questions are or can be powerful questions to help you and me find new solutions, see new opportunities, or to do things differently? However, 
in our daily work, we're often focused too much on why something cannot be done, end of quote. We're going to take a little look today back and forward as we ask some what-if questions. So we're going to start and go way back at that burning bush where God met with Moses. God had some mighty what-if questions for Moses. What if Moses would go to Pharaoh and demand release of the Israelites? Now, God didn't ask it quite that way, but you can imagine that's basically what was happening. And what if the Israelites, Moses came back with his own what-if question, what if, the Mos- <laughs> what if the Israelites want to know your name, he says to God. What Moses might not have realized at that moment, which Jesus later explained, was that the very essence of God has always been, will always be, resurrection. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. This was Jesus' go-to verse when he needed to explain to the Sadducees that God is the God of the living, not the dead. Those who are alive to God in their lives were people who are alive to God even though they have died. This God, the God who put the tree of life in the Garden of Eden, has always been the God of everlasting life. God could be trusted to go with Moses before Pharaoh and then across the Red Sea, remember that story? And then even with Joshua into the promised land and beyond. Well, now we're going to go to the Gospel of John. Martha has a hard what-if question for Jesus. Now, she doesn't put it quite that way, but I'll give you my loose translation. What if you had been here, Jesus? Then Lazarus would not have died. How did Jesus answer her? Do you remember? Your brother will rise again. Well, that was not the issue for Martha at that moment. She confesses that she knows he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. She can't really see how that helps her in the here and now, right? Did you hear Jesus reply? I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes with me will never die. Do you believe this? Jesus was getting at the heart of her question and maybe at the heart of our question. What if we trust in Jesus with all of our hearts and therefore we trust in God, knowing that we will always, always be alive to God? Is resurrection at the heart of our faith? Fast forward now to the what-if question that Paul posed to the church in Corinth in chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians. What would have happened if Jesus hadn't died and been raised from the grave? It seemed there were those claiming that Jesus had not been raised from the dead. In other words, there was no resurrection. That was a dangerous what-if that was circulating in the church of Corinth at that time. Think about our own lives and our own faith. Paul said, we would be the most pitied if the resurrection wasn't true. I'll ask you again, how much is the resurrection part of your daily faith life? Now let's look back. We're going to go back in time, but a little closer. What if Middletown Presbyterians, a.k.a. Jaredstown Presbyterians, because you know they started out as Middletowners and then they became Jaredstowners. You see, they were flexible people back then. What if they had given up their dream when the Cool Spring Presbyterian Church didn't make it? It closed. What if they said, well, if they didn't survive, then how can we? How can we even think about it? You see, Cool Spring Church just closed after 33 years. And if you want to look at the cornerstone, it's out in front of the church if you haven't seen it. What if our spiritual ancestors had been discouraged by this and thought only about what they could not do, that they could not start this church instead of what they could? Well, as we sit and stand here 230-plus years later, we realize 
that there must have been a majority, at least 51%, right, um, who did think, who did not think that way, but did think there was a possibility. Now, uh, magically on your screen is going to come up a picture, hopefully, of the Girard House. For they had been worshiping in the Girard House, and we're thankful to Rachel and Bill Cushwa, who are here with us this morning, to let us come and take a tour and, so Tom t and take some pictures. And you can go down and visit today. I invite you to do that. That house is where this church began. They were meeting there with our friends, the, the Methodists, and they were having worship there together. Isn't that amazing? And then the, 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 Jared's, the Middletown, then they became Jaredstown Presbyterians, decided they needed a little bit bigger space. So they, there's another picture that should come right behind that. There is a painting. It's in the session house if you want to get a closer look. And they built this, that church that's in that picture you see on the screen back in 1793, where they continued to study and worship after they'd outgrown the Girard House. It is great to look back, but we aren't living in 1793 anymore. We're living in 2023. Maybe we need to ask ourselves, what do we believe is possible now? Are we more inclined to think of what we cannot do rather than think and ask, what if? Jesus' question to Martha is still ringing in our ears. Do you believe this? And yes, I'm asking, what if we believe this? I think a clear understanding that God is a resurrection, life-giving God is vital to us, to this church, but to every church that is worshiping today today and still has doors open. Here is another question, another what if to consider. What if Jaredstown had never been started? What if there was no Jaredstown Presbyterian today? What would life be like? If there was no Jaredstown Presbyterian, there would be no Sunday worship that we're sitting in, and there's going to be a picture that's going to come up to show us where we are. There would be no children's church. There would be... There wouldn't be this, this place that has had so many services through the years. There would be no cemetery that, that Riley was asking about when she was up here, where the young and indeed the old are lovingly buried. There would be no fellowship hall where so many community, community dinner meals have been paired, served, delivered, and I know Bev can probably tell us a number, and picked up on the last Tuesday of each month. And where so many other events are enjoyed, VBS, community Thanksgiving meals, coffee house church. And there would be no session house still standing today, I'm pretty sure, where we have the office, the pastor's study, where there, the session has meetings. If there was no... Jaredstown Presbyterian, there would be no mission outreach to Jaredstown Elementary. No help for Berkeley County Backpacks or CCAP or Rescue Mission, Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, FCCH. There'd be no parking lot. You wouldn't think that's important, but it's important to people here. They come and stop and they text message. They eat their lunch there. They visit together. They even just come and turn around and go back the other way. There would be no help for those who need assistance with utility bills, rent, or gift cards for food. And then there would be no funerals, weddings, baptisms, sharing care or make-and-take events, Easter egg hunts, confirmation classes, Bible studies, church family get-togethers, hospital or hospice visits, home visits, or prayer group meetings. And I know there's others I have forgotten. I think our mothers and fathers of the faith must have asked their version of what if. What if we bought some land and built a church house? Their dream became a reality less than 25 years after this building was in place. Sarah Morgan Groff Gordon in her book shares a list of names, 270 to be exact, of the members of the Sabbath School Society in Jarrettstown Presbyterian, one of the earliest 
Sunday schools in the Winchester Presbyterian. 270 folks. That's a lot of people. It says in the book that the original church house was built to hold 300 people. Tom said they must have been squeezed in there like sardines. But they were holding Sabbath school. So I had made me think, though, as I read that, about some stories of Dick Ludan and Janet and who else told me? Genevieve, about the Sunday school here. And they told me how there would be some people, I think it was the children that were up in the balcony. Then there were some people up here. There were some people in the pews. And, I, and, and, and there just wasn't room for everybody. And that's why they had to dig out the basement so they could make Sunday school classrooms down below. So we are challenged on this day in our time to be people who believe the greatest what if ever. The what if that Jesus said, is it really true and what he did? Yes, he really died and he really rose from the dead and ascended to heaven. And I believe, if you haven't got it already, I think faith in that what if is essential today. When we believe and give our lives to Christ, the one who lived and died and rose and ascended, we lay down our self-centeredness, our worries, our fears, and we pick up his cross that holds the promise of resurrection life. What if in Christ we dream of new possibilities for this community and this church? What if we believe that the God who raised Jesus from the dead is the same God who is at work in all of us and through us today, no matter which church you normally attend? What if there isn't anything too hard or too wonderful for God to do here and now and in the future? What if God is able and what if we are willing? And what if everyone at Jaredstown Presbyterian and anyone else that wants to joins in our version of Sabbath school, a seven-week study of Acts this fall that might happen not just on Sabbath or Sunday, but may happen many days during the week. What might happen? Oh, yes, there is some risk involved in asking what-if questions because there might be new ideas. There might be new ways of doing things. This church was, what, was once a what-if dream, a prayer that became a reality. What other dreams might have become reality when we dare to pray and ask what if? Together with God, in Christ Jesus, and then listen for the direction of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we praise you that you are God of the what ifs. In my imagination, O oh God, I see you before the world began saying, what if? What if I created a world? What if I created a world with people, men and women, a beautiful world full of beautiful places where they can live and, and thrive and walk with me in love and grace and enjoy the fellowship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Oh, God, we thank you this morning that that you gave a what-if question to some Presbyterians a long time ago and some Methodists, because their church is still there. We bless you, Lord, for these what-if questions that people dared to step out and say, well, you mean us? You're talking to us, Lord? And you said yes. And congregations were started. And families grew up. And Lord, the rest, as they say, is history. But you have more history than what's be behind us. You have more ahead of us. Would you help us to see your vision, your what if that you're asking us today, that you're whispering in the ears of the people right here, your what ifs for the future. Even the children that were sitting on the floor this morning, they had some hard what ifs, oh God. But they aren't impossible with you. Nothing is impossible for our mighty, 
creator God who raised his son from the dead and is seated, our Lord Jesus, at the right hand of God the Father and your Holy Spirit who fills this place and fills us that we might give you praise and glory, that we might come into your presence, believing you are here with us as we worship and realize your word is truth and is what we need to walk in. It's what we need to live in, especially the truth of the resurrection. Oh God, our world needs to know that you are God of forever and your love lasts. It doesn't give up on us. It never goes away. It's, your love is always there. Lord, we pray for your love this day for the people in Morocco who have had a horrendous, very deadly earthquake. Oh God, we lift them to you because their hearts are broken. They're searching. It's in chaos. We continue to lift the people in Maui who are coming back home and finding devastation. Lord, we lift up the hurricane that's out there in the Atlantic and doesn't know quite which way it's going to head, but Jesus, you are still the speaker of calm on the wind and the waves. So, Lord, we speak for you today to calm. We speak your calm over that hurricane. And Lord, in your name, we, we send it away from land by your mercy. For your mercy, O oh Lord, we pray. Because you call us to step in and to proclaim your goodness and your mercy wherever we are, whatever is going on, because your love is the resurrection love in Christ Jesus. Today, O oh Lord, we lift up our whole world and we lift up our community we live in and we lift up each of the churches represented here. And Lord Jesus, we bless you for each of them, including this one. And Lord, we thank you for the families. We thank you for the work that they do in your name. And Lord, we thank you for the future you have for them. And we bless you for your what-ifs for them. Today we give you praise and glory because Beverly Kane is home from the hospital and we thank you for that. We continue to believe, Jesus, for your mercy and grace over her as she finds out test results in this coming week. We thank you for her family that surrounds her. We lift up Dorothy Teeter as she awaits test results that are coming on her heart. Lord God, and we continue to bless you as you bless her. We bless you and praise you that Tom had all the staples and everything out from his gallbladder surgery and is healing well. We bless you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy to him. We bless you for new baby Lily Ruth, who was born on Thursday night rather unexpectedly, eight pounds, five ounces, at home, and mama and baby are doing great. We bless you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for that new life. We bless you, Lord, for the rain that we've had. We bless you and thank you for that we so needed that water. Bless you, God. We thank you, oh God, for being with Nick, who has interviews this Wednesday with Amazon and another company. And we bless you, Lord, for one of those to be the job for him. We thank you ahead of that. And Lord, today we bless you because Maggie and Mike Jessup are somehow connected, I expect it's Facebook Live, with us. And Mike has been home on hospice, sleeping a lot, but he was awake this morning to come to worship here online. So we praise you, Lord. Bless you for Maggie and Mike. We bless you, Lord, that you hold Mike in your hands. And he knows that may not, maybe today or tomorrow, I don't know, but he's going to be in glory with you, Jesus. So we praise you for his life, and we thank you for this time that he's been able to join us this morning in worship. And we praise you, Jesus, because you are there. You are there with him and Maggie as he is here with us through the wonders of technology. 
Thank you, Jesus, for your blessing. Thank you for your presence with him. Thank you for your love that surrounds him and holds him. And that peace that surpasses all understanding will graze you. We thank you for that peace in Michael Jessup today. Oh, God, we bless you that as the body of Christ gathers, you re are, there's rejoicing in heaven. For you bring the kingdom of heaven right here, right here among us, that we can rejoice even as we may have tears with those that are weeping because the resurrection is real and it is your gift to each of us as we live in and with you, Lord Jesus. Lord, there are prayers that are unspoken this morning, things I may have forgotten that I needed to pray. We lift those to you, knowing that you know each one and you bring your blessing into them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. As we pray together the prayer that you taught your disciples and us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
what if? What if whatever troubles happen to you this week, whatever sadness, whatever despair, whatever bad news, whatever good news happens, you remember that little word, Jesus is resurrected from the dead. Just remind yourself that little phrase, Jesus is resurrected from the grave. He's that little word that fells everything, everything. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I bless you all. Amen. Stay and eat, stay and eat, stay and eat.